Would you like to learn about networking for cloud architects? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I've been working in technology for well over 25 years and I'm one of the original Cisco certified internet experts. And today we're going to be talking about BGP for cloud architects. I'd like to begin this discussion with what is BGP? BGP is a routing protocol. More specifically, it's an exterior gateway protocol that's used to connect to external organizations. What do I mean by an exterior gateway protocol? Inside of organizations, they run a routing protocol, which is called an IGP, and that's what they use for their internal routing. But when an organization determines it needs to connect to an external organization, it still needs to share some routing information, and it needs to ensure some routing information to ensure there's connectivity between both organizations. And the way you do that is you use an exterior gateway protocol, and the exterior gateway protocol that's widely used is BGP or border gateway protocol. Now BGP is what you would call a path vector routing protocol and it will determine a path to get to the destination. And by determining the best path to the destination, it can enable you to traffic engineer your traffic as well as make sure your data gets from point A to point B. Now when you're dealing with a cloud computing environment, you're going to be using BGP for a lot of reasons. For example, when using AWS, if you want to connect to AWS over a direct connection, you must use BGP. And if you're going to be dealing with a lot of VPC pairing or a lot of VPNs, again, you're going to be using um, BGP and you're going to be using it with Cloud Hub. Now, there's lots of places you would be using BGP in a cloud computing environment, but today we're just going to talk about what is BGP, how it works, and then I will give you several examples to show you how to manipulate traffic over BGP in a cloud computing environment. So let's describe BGP. So BGP is again, it's a path vector routing protocol, but it resides on top of the TCP protocol, most specifically port 179. So if you're gonna run a TCP session, if you're gonna run a BGP session, which we'll talk about in a minute called BGP pairing, you must make sure that on both sides of the connection, TCP port 179 is open. So if you're behind a firewall, please open TCP port 179 or BGP will never establish a session. Now, BGP actually does something called a neighbor adjacency. So what happens is a BGP speaker connects to another BGP speaker over TCP port 179, and then they start exchanging information. Each BGP person, peer, person that connects to each other is referred to as a peer. So when you're setting up BGP, you're setting up BGP peering sessions. You may hear the term peering a lot, like VPC pairing. Where do you think it all comes from? It comes from the BGP world. So basically you have one BGP router speaking to another BGP router and they're called peers and they must establish a peer adjacency and a neighbor relationship long before they can exchange any routing information. Now, while we're talking about BGP, there's two forms of BGP that we must talk about. In a cloud computing environment, you're gonna be using something called eBGP or external or exterior BGP. And that's a form of BGP used when you would be connecting your organization to an AWS cloud, for example, over your direct connection, or when you'd be connecting your organization, also called an autonomous system, to an internet service provider or multiple internet service providers. Again, you're gonna be using eBGP because it's exterior. Internal gateway protocols or IGPs are used inside of your organization and they're things like OSPF or EIGRP and exterior gateway protocols are typically BGP and used to connect to external organizations. So now that you know what BGP is, let's talk about what BGP does. And by it has a path algorithm that'll use to determine the best route, which we'll talk about in a minute, because you need to know the algorithm before you think about manipulating factors, because the factors that you manipulate are based upon the algorithm, and the algorithm determines the path selection. So we talked a little bit about why organizations use BGP, but let's talk a little bit more about BGP and what makes it so special. First, BGP is incredibly scalable. What do I mean by scalable? When you're dealing with AWS, they say you can have 100 routes and with BGP. But when you're dealing with an internet routing table, you're dealing with three quarters of a million routes plus. So if an organization connects to five internet service providers, they're gonna take in three quarters of a million routes from five different internet service providers. And BGP is the only protocol that can scale to that. And that's why BGP is used so extensively in internet routing, scalability. Same reason Amazon's you're gonna use it or any of the other cloud providers will use it, scalability. But it's not just scalability that makes BGP so great, it's actually the tunability. And, the, and what I mean by the tunability is you can easily manipulate BGP path selection to promote traffic engineering. 
For example, if you've got two internet connections and you want to use this connection for some traffic and this connection for other traffic, with BGP you can do so because you can manipulate the path of traffic. And you can also manipulate the path inbound based upon your connections. And you must, if you're going to use BGP successfully, make sure that you deal with outbound routes and inbound routes. Because if you don't, your traffic can go over one connection and come back in another connection. And when we give you some examples, we'll show you how to avoid those challenges. So when people use BGP to connect to the internet service provider, it's for one reason. They want to load share across direct connections. If they didn't want to load share, they would just set a direct connect, they would set a default route to one connection, and they'd have a backup default route to another direct connection, and everything would work perfectly. But in this particular case, we want to load share. So now that we know what BGP is, what it is, why you would use it, let's talk about how to tune it a little bit. So let's first talk about the algorithm itself. Now, I mentioned BGP is tunable because it's got a decision tree and the algorithm that determines how your traffic is sent. So I will tell you the first component is the most specific route will always be chosen, which means if you have two routes to the same destination and one route is more specific, like a 192.168.0.0 slash 24, and if you had that same route, but a summary route or an aggregate route of 192.168.0.0 slash 16, the path to the slash 24 will be taken because it's a more specific route. So once we know that routers always choose the most specific route, now let's look at the BGP decision tree. First and foremost, it's going to determine the path with the largest weight on routers that support weight. AWS and Cisco support weight. If the weight is not set on the router, the BGP decision tree is going to use the highest local preference. So again, you can modify local preference in order to tune the way um, outbound traffic would go. The next part of the decision tree is the, the BGP router is gonna basically choose routes that are originated on the router. It's not really something you have to deal with in cloud computing, but what that means is if you're on a router and you advertise a route on that router, the router where you advertise the route is gonna be more believable than if you learn the route from somebody else. Of course, because it's not whispered down the lane. If I tell you that I own this, and somebody else tells you that Moak owns this, which is more believable. Well, if I tell you I own it and I'm the owner, it's more believable. And the router that originated the route is the same thing. Now, this next thing is very important and it's gonna choose the path with the shortest autonomous system path. See, what happens when you learn a route is you get to figure out the path that the route took. So if you go through five internet service providers along the way, you're gonna see five AS paths. And if you see four AS paths on the other link you have, that's going to be the more preferred route, all things being equal. But you can tune that and you can manipulate inbound and outbound traffic with autonomous system paths via prepending. And this is one of the few ways you can modify both sides of the traffic without owning both sides. So we'll talk about how to do that in one of the examples. Then it's going to choose the path with the lowest origin code. We don't need to talk about that. And then it's going to choose the route with the lowest meta or multi-exit discriminator, which is basically a metric. And you can tune this. And obviously, it's going to pick an eBGP route over an iBGP route because generally speaking, eBGP routes are deemed more reliable. And if you're dealing with a Cisco router, you're going to be dealing with a lower administrative distance. But if you're dealing with routers in general, they know to prefer an eBGP route over an iBGP route because it tends to be more reliable. Now, once we get past this, this is where the routing algorithm starts getting goofy. First, it's going to choose the route to the lowest IGP, the shortest path to the IGP neighbor. Then it's going to pick things like the lowest router ID and the lowest IP address. You never, ever, ever want to leave these things to chance. Uh, the reason BGP will make a path determination is to make sure that it's, it can determine the best path and it's got to have an election process. And when all else fails, things like lowest router ID or lowest IP address. So now let's talk about some of the tunable factors in BGP that you can use to engineer your traffic. First and foremost, you can use the more specific route and we'll walk you through an example of that coming up soon. The other thing you can do is you can manipulate your outbound traffic by changing the weight. And basically by manipulating the weight, you can manipulate your outbound traffic. Now, if you're on a router that doesn't support weight, and many of them do, but not all BGP routers support weight, you can use the next best thing, which is the local preference. And you can manipulate your outbound traffic by manipulating the local preference. Now, you can actually use manipulate your inbound and outbound traffic by using something called AS path prepending. And what does that mean? If you, if let's say you have two links, if the link to a route is five AS paths here and four AS paths here, all things being equal, 
the traffic is going to use the one with four AS paths because it looks to be shorter than the routing algorithm. So I mentioned you can manipulate inbound and outbound traffic with local preference, so it's a really good tunability factor. Here's what happens. When you receive a route via VGP, you can manipulate the local preference by prepending or adding multiple autonomous systems there, and it will make it look longer and make it a less preferred route for outbound traffic. And therefore, if you wanted this link, for example, to take the shorter path and you prepended this one to make it look less desirable, your outbound traffic will take this path. Now, BGP routing is bi-directional, so you must configure it in both directions. So if you wanted, for example, to make this route look ugly, so this one's preferred, then on this router, you'd also have to make sure on the far end that you can make the routes advertised on this one look uglier, so this one would be chosen, and that way your traffic goes where it wants. If you don't optimize your inbound and outbound traffic on BGP, what'll happen is you'll send your data out one link and it'll come back another link. And that's never a good thing because your traffic, when it starts arriving via asynchronous routing, you get out of order packets, voice applications, video applications, never a good thing. So you want to make sure if you're going to manipulate any traffic, you manipulate outbound and inbound. And AS path prepending is a great way to influence inbound traffic. And it's one of your only ways to do it. Why? Because while it's easy for you to manipulate the weight or the local preference on your router, you can't tell the internet service provider to do that for you, but you can, or AWS in many cases, but you can just prepend your AS and their router is gonna basically sell longer path, less desirable. That's how you manipulate inbound and outbound quite easily. The last thing that you can do is you can manipulate the med um, and you can make one, one route look better than another. There are other ways to do this, but realistically speaking, they are the things you're gonna tune and most frequently you're gonna use nothing other more than either a more specific route, manipulate the weight, local preference, or prepend AS paths. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk you through some traffic engineering situations. So now let's talk about load sharing across redundant direct connections to AWS. As I mentioned previously, when you connect to AWS via direct connection, BGP or eBGP is required for the connection. And that's actually quite a good thing. Why? Because it means you can exchange routing information dynamically so you'll know from your data center how to reach your AWS subnet and your VPC will know how to reach back to your on-premises environment and that way we'll have full reachability. So there's a couple ways we are gonna suggest manipulating traffic. Now the easiest means is to basically use the, the path of most specificity. What I mean by that is routers will always choose the most specific route. So if you've got a slash 24 and a slash 25 to the same destination, it's gonna choose the slash 24 over the slash 25 because it's gonna be a more specific route. So looking in this environment, let's look about some ways that we actually manipulated traffic. So in this particular example, and you can see in the graphic, what I've done, I have two links. On the top link, I've basically advertised a slash 16. And on the bottom link, I've also advertised another slash 16 going to AWS. Now they're different slash 16s, and that way each one of these links is going to be preferable when AWS wants to send the traffic back to my VPC. Now, if I just did that on its own, on the top link, I'd be able to reach one sub, and on the bottom of the link, I'd be able to reach another subnet, which would be perfect until one link breaks. So what I also do is I send a summary route over both links. And what happens with the summary route is it's a less preferred route. So what will typically happen is you'll use your more specific route on the top link, the more specific route on the bottom link, and then you're going to have perfectly good traffic engineering in one direction. Now, what you would do on the AWS side in this particular case, you can see on the top link, I sent one, one subnet that was more specific, or I should say supernet, and the bottom link, I sent in another sum, uh, subnet or summary or supernet, whichever you choose to call it, that's gonna be more specific. And again, I made sure that one path was desirable by being more specific on the top and more specific on the bottom for a different route. Now, again, I have to send a summary route in case one link breaks. And by doing that, now, I've manipulated the top link to be used for certain subnets and the bottom link to be used for certain subnets and we don't have anything to worry about about out of order packets because what we've done is we've used a more specific route. Now, the, the next thing that we could do is we could just simply manipulate the weight for outbound path selection. So for example, on our router, the one that's gonna connect, we could obviously just change the, 
the weight to one set of routing routing subnets and we could do that on the top we could change the weight for another set of routing subnets and that will change the outbound traffic based upon the different weight and of course on the aws side we're actually in control of that so we can manipulate the weight on the top and the bottom and by doing that we can make sure we can traffic engineer on both sides now the next way that you can actually do this, if you wanted to make something more preferred versus not preferred or block one link or not block link is doing something called AS path prepending. Now I previously mentioned to you that you know at some point BGP is gonna use the shortest AS path, meaning if one's two hops away and one's one hop away, the one AS path hop is gonna be more preferred. So you could do the same thing here. On the way on your routers going to AWS, you can prepend certain routes on one of the links to make it less desirable, and you can prepend other routes on the top link to make it less desirable. And by being less desirable on both sides, but still having both there, automatically if one link breaks, the other link is gonna take over in the traffic. So you can traffic engineer in that direction, and you've also got the capability to fall over. Now, you would do the same thing when manipulating your traffic to AWS. You could prepend your ASs on the way to AWS and therefore it would be done automatically from your side or on the AWS router if you have control over it. What you could also do is you could basically take the internal routes and prepend them. When you have control over both sides of the environment, it's basically a much better situation. But on, the easiest way to do this is from your organization, since you have complete control of the routers, and when you're dealing with external organizations, you may have control one day, but not another day. So make sure that you take care of this all on your end. Prepend routes on the way in to determine which is preferred and which for one way route set of routes and another set of routes, and prepend on the way out, and that way you can influence your traffic on the service provider side too. Now that's really three great ways to engineer your traffic. More specific routes changing the weight or modifying the local preference. Now there's lots of ways you can tune BGP and for people like me that have spent 10,000 hours working on BGP, um, it's something we've done in all kinds of traffic engineering environments. We can talk about communities in another video. If you'd like to learn a lot more about BGP, let me know in the comments section below and I will happily create more BGP for Cloud Architect videos. I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I'd like to tell you about some free offerings our organization does to help the Cloud Architect community. Every Monday and every Thursday, we have a free online webinar and we teach you how to get your first cloud architect job. We teach you what hiring managers desire. We teach you things to do to improve your resume. We teach you ways to avoid HR, to get your hands directly in the, your resume directly in the hands of the hiring manager so you can be hired. And then we teach you how to interview and we give you all this great information that's for free and we do it every Monday and Thursday. Most Wednesdays, we actually do a live stream on YouTube where you can ask us any kind of cloud computing career question you want and we will answer them in real time. We have an AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate eBook. It's completely free. It's everything you need to pass the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate exam. And on Mondays, we do free AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate mentoring. We have a group Zoom call and we have all kinds of fun doing tutoring on AWS environments. Again, it's completely free, so please enjoy this. Thank you all so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in another video next week.